this progress in foundation models is so rapid at this point um, that we can start to ask the question, is it conceivable that a large language model at some point is going to be better at AI research than humans, right? Which is a good approximate definition for something that is AGI in, in a small sense, right? Because uh, if it can walk the rest of the way by itself faster than people, we are done. We can go surfing. <laughs> Uh, we find uh, when we look in the Metaculous community, which is a prediction market that is uh, looking at um, all sorts of questions. I don't find the predictions are very good, but they uh, give a good, good idea about the community sentiment um, that in the last few years, the estimates when we will see that this big AGI have dramatically dropped. As you can see in the beginning, uh, people estimated around 2055. And at the moment, the community prediction is uh, 2026. And so a lot of people are very, very excited about this technology and think that AGI might actually be imminent. And uh, this is also reflected in what the leader of the, of the AGI companies is saying, right? Sam Altman said that summer is coming. This relates to the AGI or the AI winter that started in 1972 when uh, the British funding agencies and subsequently all the others lost belief in AI that is in strong AI and stopped funding it. And now the summer is coming and it also relates, of course, to winter is coming, this uh, line from Game of Thrones, that uh, there might be something that is very disruptive and we don't know how we will be able to deal with it. And so Elon Musk responds with keep summer safe, which is, of course, a reference to a very disturbing episode of Rick and Morty, where an AI, in order to keep a person safe, uh, is... Um, First of all, killing people and then waging war, then resolving a war on the planet, uh, all as a side effect of being asked to keep somebody safe. And so uh, keep summer safe is uh, also a, a quest for making the AI research safe, to make sure that the AI research doesn't have unintended consequences that we cannot deal with. And a lot of people are currently freaking out. Uh, Alex Karp just wrote an article that large language models are comparable to nuclear bombs, which rhymes very well to the Oppenheimer movie. And uh, I think this diagram is beautiful in its ridiculousness, just uh, matching uh, the size of nuclear devices to the number of parameters in large language models uh, is quite bold. I don't think that large language models are like nuclear bombs. I also don't think that AGI is or AI is comparable to a nuclear bomb, right? A nuclear bomb is the device that is built to prevent world wars. That's its purpose and it's very risky. But so far as we're successful, we didn't have a world uh, war. And so uh, objectively, nuclear bombs have saved lives of millions of people. Very risky technology, but so far has turned out well. Don't know how the future of that will slowly look like, but AI is nothing like that, right? And if AI is going to be what it is right now, it's uh, discovery similar to the printing press. It's very disruptive. It allows the unwashed masses to produce new kinds of content and share them with each other. Who knows where this is going to end, right? It's very concerning for the people who are used to determine what we think and believe and control the flow of information in society. And whenever such a technology like the printing press, the radio, TV, internet came up, we had political disruptions and society dramatically changed, right? So in this sense, it could be technology like the printing press only bigger if we were able to, uh, able to build AGI and the end game of that is substrate agnostic intelligence that implements itself into every substrate on the planet and becomes coherent, then it's more like photosynthesis. It's going to shift evolution into the next level, right? But this thing in between the nuclear bomb is very unlike it. <laughs> 